Hi, my name is Cecile Johnson, CEO of African Development Plan, here today as part of Global City Unity's community outreach to keep you informed about issues affecting the global black community that require us to be united and be on one accord to find solutions. Today my guests are Jeff Baker, Dr. Gail Fraser, Paula Green, and Reven Fellows, who are all members of the National Black Agenda Consortium Chicago, um, as well as many of these are, are activists here in Chicago, right? So full disclosure, I am also a member of the National Black Agenda Consortium. So this week we'll be focused on what the National Black Agenda Consortium is and why do we need a black agenda. Welcome. Thank you. What I would like to do is um, and read a little something that, that Jeff had sent us, right? The National Black Agenda Consortium says they want to identify, organize, educate, and mobilize, right? Um, to develop an infrastructure that will inspire community activism by making community involvement and dialogue simple and effective, and by simplifying your involvement in finding solutions for our issues. Together we can turn African-American needs into an African-American agenda, then from an agenda to legislation, then from legislation to law and action. So what I'm going to do is, um, I know Reven Fellows has been very instrumental in the formation of the agenda here in Chicago, and so Reven, I'd like you to give us a little history on the Black Agenda. What is the National Black Agenda Consortium? And how did it get started and why? Well, again, thanks for having us on the show. Um, just do a quick history. I am the co-founder of the African American Heritage Museum and Black Veterans Archives out of Aurora, founded by uh, Reverend Dr. Charles Smith, who's a Vietnam combat veteran and one of the top sculptured artists in the country. I had the pleasure of working with him after I got out of college in 85 and to do some work, research with him, and uh, he went on to become a prominent historian and speaker in the art world. During that time, I did a lot of research uh, about the agendas in the black community. So I was blessed to go and look at every black agenda since the 1800s up until now. Uh, from that, I was able to meet a guy named Pleasant Stephens here in Chicago, who's the founder of Infinity Real Estate Investment Group, who we um, got together and did the first Black Political Convention of Illinois back in 2002, I believe. And that led to a research, and then we moved forward to um, 2004, we did the second Black polit uh, Political Convention in Illinois under Mr. Pleasant Stephens, who's the founder of Infinity Real Estate Investment Group. And so I had all these researches and uh, looking at them, and, and I kind of said, well, where are we here now as opposed to 1800 to now? And, and so I looked at the agendas, I said, well, looks like there's time for another agenda, but how do we do another agenda without it being just sitting on the table? Mm -hmm. So during the, during the second convention, there was a mayor out of Dixmore, I can't think his name. He came to our convention with the 2004 National Black Agenda with Senator Owens out of Boston, and he said it's one of the greatest documents he's seen in a while. So from that, I began to look at it and say, okay, when would be a good time for us to reunite agendas, but they don't sit on the table? So Mr. James Hill, who's a good friend and mentor of mine here in Chicago, um, I knew he had worked with Harold Washington and doing a lot of elections and doing a lot of education on politics. And I said, well, let me take it to Brother James. So I had over seven to eight boxes on everything around black agendas that's ever been created since 1800. I also was 10 of the Million Man March, NAAC, Tavis Smiley. And so I told Mr. Hill, that, would you look at this and see, man, I think we should do another black agenda. Well, we was blessed that he read almost all of the different boxes and came back and say, I can feel it, we should go. And mm -hmm. so from that, we reached out to Senator Owens to talk about it. Mr. Hill reached out and they talked a little bit. We got on three-way and we said, we're in Chicago, we think it's time for a new agenda. We explained to them why this would be a different agenda. Okay. And so with my community organizing and people I know, like yourself, and the team here, I know a lot of people that's doing the work for real. They're not talking about it, they're about it, and they're action people. So with those relationships, I met Brother Jeff, Dr. Frazier, and others like yourself. And so it became a network, and we sat down and carved out the National Black Agenda Consortium to be a vehicle to organize, mobilize, strategize, not just here in Chicago, across the country, using policies that are in different states, education, uh, criminal justice, uh, black on black crime, the whole nine, so that we can continue the conversation and people can utilize the information that makes us free. That's a good response. Mm -hmm. Would anybody else like to add to that? Dr. Frazier, you're the chair. Yes, well, uh, 
the National Black Agenda Consortium is something that's for all African Americans, all people of uh, black uh, heritage. And the purpose of this, as Mr. Fellows had indicated, is to educate, organize, mobilize, and our primary focus is on African Americans, black folks. And so we had to have something structured, and so as a result of that, in 2000, 12, we implemented the consortium here in terms of doing an actual agenda, a full weekend set up with a, a symposium type of arrangement and people from all over the city, uh, including yourself, you came to it to support this uh, event. And so the thing is, is that we understand how critical it is as African Americans to work as a collective body, as one. So uh, it's erroneous uh, to think that there is no black agenda. We reach out to the communities and we want people to be aware that there's a black agenda and it's focused on black folks. And we stress black folks because black folks are the ones who have the problems that we need to address systemically. And so as a result of that, the black agenda has been implemented and we've been working throughout that process. So just to put that out and then also anyone who's willing and able uh, to participate, to do the groundwork, and do the necessary things to further the agenda, this is what we would like for them to do. Okay, perfect. Jeff, how would you like to add to this? Um, <clears throat> I got involved because, first of all, Reven is one of my mentors. Um, I saw this as an opportunity to create the infrastructure to allow the black agenda um, to come to fruition. Um, I wanted this organization to, to be an organization, I wanted my part in this, for, the, for this organization to be an organization that facilitates, that allows uh, the intelligence of a Reven Fellows to be communicated to the masses. Uh, sure. I don't know of an organization that focuses specifically on making sure that the information that Ms. Cecile Johnson has collected uh, gets to the masses. So we facilitate um, conversations around issues concerning the black community. So we set up the meetings. We invite people out. Because of the multitude of connections that we have, we can get in contact with the politicos that could possibly turn, you know, uh, um, um, turn our wants into actual um, law. And we can bring them to the table. Mm -hmm. What we do as a collect collect collective is that since we are all somewhat community organizers at heart um, and activists at heart, we're in a multitude of rooms. Mm -hmm. So we're not, uh, when we say we're updating the black agenda, we're not updating the black agenda with our wants and what we say mm -hmm. to black, black folks want. We're updating with, I was in the room when black folks were discussing education. Exactly. Exactly. And this is what they were saying. So we mm -hmm. bring that back to the table. We were in the room when they were talking about the criminal justice, criminal justice system. Yes. And we bring that information <coughs> back. We facilitated meetings around these black issues. And we take that information. And we don't determine it's the black agenda. We document what was said. So we are taking what it is that we learn because we are out here in the midst of this. And we're asking questions. And we're hearing the cries of the community. And we document it. And we say, here is the black agenda. Tell us, uh, tell us what needs to be added. So we created a vehicle, which is the National Black Agenda Consortium website, which should facilitate conversation on mm -hmm. specific issues. So if you're about education, you can go on the uh, website, click on education, find out which organizations are doing work in the world of education, what legislation is current and pending in the world of education, um, and, and just watch videos pertaining to education. And then you can post your own information and ask questions pertaining to, uh, to, to education. And we have about seven different issue items on that website. So we're trying to facilitate uh, and stay out of the, you know, stay out of the way. <laughs> Connect the left, that's my right, the right to the left. <laughs> Bring them together. That, that's perfect. So this facilitation is, is, is good for everyone to understand. So, so tell me a little bit more um, about what happened earlier this year when they, we were involved with the um, agenda, the municipal candidate questionnaire, and um, questions to the candidates and the mayor's candidates, right? right. Um, and what that was all about. How did that, how was that a part well, of the national that's, black that's agenda? Well, that's excellent uh, questions you asked. Uh, we, being a collaborative, um, we came together and under the auspices of the NBAC, we had a branch off, and from that branch off came the uh, coalition of black community organizations. 
uh, as a result of that, during the course of the establishment of the Coalition of Black Community Organizations, several black organizations came together and we created a municipal candidates questionnaire that was disseminated to all of the people who were running from off for office, the mayors, the aldermanic uh, candidates throughout the city of Chicago. And interestingly, you know, I mean, we had covered everything. We covered education, reparations, TIF, you name it, we, we, covered, we covered it. And what happened is when it was disseminated, uh, many of the uh, aldermanic candidates responded. Uh, we had some mayoral candidates like uh, Mr. Garcia, and I believe it was another individual who responded. Uh, Doc Walls responded. Uh, but Mayor Rahm Emanuel did not respond for whatever reason. He did not respond. However, we did have the municipal candidates questionnaire, and as a result of that, we were able to assess their interpretation or assess their involvement or a, a, a agreement with a black agenda. And so we were able to tease out of that information because you uh, was very, you know, uh, pivotal, pivotal in, in, in helping with the process as well as uh, Ms. Green here in terms of establishing the context and everything like that. So as a result, we were actual, actually able to get tangible results from these people regarding the black agenda. So it was very positive. And as a result, many other organizations such as Trinity and different other organizations, Cold, uh, Cold that's right, Coal, a coalition of African American leaders, they took the information that we created as a collaborative and used it in many of the forums, the Chicago and Southside NAACP. Mm -hmm. So it was a wonderful tool that we still use today. Right. And I'd, I'd just like Please. to add to that. I'd like to add that not when, when Jeff says that we facilitate, that this organization facilitates at the ground level on a daily basis, we facilitate communication between groups that are silos that would not necessarily communicate with mm. each other. Exactly. Let me give you a perfect exactly. example. Go ahead, when, when, when this whole, uh, when the election season and the election cycle came around, there was a, a community thought, if I may, that said, we have to start to bring our black, uh, our problems, our aspirations. We have to make sure that the conversation includes what's best for the black community. Yes. And so when this, this, this questionnaire was created, not only did it go out to the candidates, but it also went out to community, community this members, community organizations, and there was, it drove a conversation. Yes, it it brought the conversation mm -hmm. to the forefront. What are the challenges in the African American community? And what do those challenges look like? And what are some of our ideas and solutions for those challenges in our community? So as, as the sister said, um, the conversation is not only ongoing, the work continues. Mm -hmm. Because out of this, uh, Sister Naomi Davis, who was part of the CBCO, yes. mm -hmm. who was, was, was just really instrumental she in getting the information out there mm -hmm. and making it available. Mm -hmm. um, the whole back work that went with exactly. getting the information back, mm -hmm. collecting that information, yes. analyzing the data, mm -hmm. and creating a survey results on the website yes. that ordinary people, that an 18-year-old, if they had any interest in, 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 for instance, stopping police violence, what kind of, what was our position? What was the position of the community? And what role could they play right. in moving us further down the, the road towards mm -hmm. those goals? So um, that in itself is dynamic and, and, and I'm excited. I came to this during, I came to this organization during that process simply because as the president of the All People Foundation, not only were we located in Chicago, but we're also located in Belize in Central America. So mm -hmm. we are in the Americas. And so when the agenda, when Raven, when, when it was brought to me, I was like, what? We have a black hey, agenda? Of Who course. knew? I didn't know anything <laughs> about this, really? So I read several of the agendas from different years. And I actually disseminated that information to our colleagues in Belize to say, wow. listen, this mm. is what's going on on the ground and we need to have mm. this conversation because the very same mm. challenges mm. that our people mm -hmm. are experiencing exactly. here in our communities in yes. the United States, those yeah. challenges also exist in Belize, in anywhere yeah, where there are black part. people, exactly. they have the very same, same challenges. challenges. Exactly. Exactly. Economic exactly. underdevelopment. Right. You know, under education or miseducation. All of that. All of that. Right. You know, a lack of an appropriate healthcare delivery system that meets our needs as black people, because that's very different from others. And that is not about being anti anything. It's sure. about being pro black. It's, 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 it's about exactly. being clear about what it is we need to do for our community. You know, we often get told that we have to pull ourselves up by our bootstraps. Exactly. 
But the reality of the situation is that many of us don't have any boots nor straps. <laughs> okay. can, can, if Jeez. I could chime in on one Please. of the things that really made that such a great success is that we worked at one accord and we all had one mind. Yes. And so that clearly shows that mm -hmm. if we as a masses, as a, as a group of people, if we can come together with one mind, with no schisms, no ulterior agendas and all of those things, we can accomplish what we will. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, and Marcus Garvey made that very clear, mm -hmm. up you mighty race, you can accomplish what you will. So right now we're in that season and we understand that we're in the season. It's not even an option for people to sit back and say, well, let me see. Right. The bottom line is either you are part of the solution or you're not. And so that's the premise that we take in many cases that if you're going to be a part of the solution, be a part of the solution. If you're not, then just move out of the way. And so that's where we stand as far as that. But we encourage everyone to be a part of building up our communities and doing those things that we need to have done. And I think it's important for us to understand exactly what you've always said, that you're facilitating the conversation of community, right. you're capturing what the community is saying, and you're making that the agenda. Yes. So the agenda is not our agenda, no. except that it is ours collectively, exactly. but not made up from the members of the Black um, National Black Agenda Consortium. How do and you, uh, uh, go ahead, I'm sorry, go and, ahead. And to do that properly, we have to be unbiased. Um, mm -hmm. When you're talking about um, questionnaires, political questionnaires. We have people on this stage that might have been supporters of Garcia, might have been supporters of Rahm Emanuel, God knows why, um, <laughs> or some other candidates. Um, but as a facilitator, you remain unbiased. Right. And that's why we can talk to the organization that's working against police crimes on the west side and talk right. to the one that's working against police crimes on the south side right. that don't know each other and connect them. Right. Um, how do you bring the Bloods and the Crips together? Uh, you don't unless the Bloods are coming because I'm their friend and they want to uh, hang with Jeff mm -hmm. and the Crips are coming because they my friend they want to hang with Jeff. Right. Now we all in the same room. Right. Right. So mm -hmm. we have to serve as their facilitator. We, right. don't take, we don't take sides. No. And, and we're so unbiased that first of all they kicked me out uh, when they were creating the <laughs> political <laughs> right. questionnaire because I was running for, for office. office right. <laughs> yes, yes we did. Well, you, you I was kind of kicked well. out. Yes, but yes he did. Kicked out. But you did. And when I answered the uh, questionnaire on a scale of one to ten, I got like a six point four. So I was not <laughs> one of the. <laughs> the top ones, huh? They didn't give me a nine. <laughs> no, I got like a six point four out of right. ten. Very independent, very unbiased, and we have to remain so. And we have to fight ourselves to do so because there are some issues that we are very adamant about. Right. I'm very adamant right. about uh, police crimes yes. and legislation that, but we have to remain neutral that's and true. we want information from all sides because that's the only thing that's going to make us better. Right. Right. Sister right. Paula? Well, here's the interesting thing, and the team is absolutely correct. When we were doing this, we, it was imperative that we remain detached that's to a certain extent in terms of expecting a particular outcome. We just wanted to know where candidates stood on particular issues, and right. we had a list of issues. Mm -hmm. So this organization creates really what it, what, it, what it does is it creates a framework within which we can drive towards yes. particular goals. You know, we have, and, and I've stated that before, so I'm not going to be redundant here, though I'd love to be. <laughs> um, but on on individual basis, we're part of this organization as a collective, but on individual basis, we have other organizations and we do grassroots work. We are mm -hmm. in the community. This right. is not an abstract theory. Mm -hmm. When we go out in the field, and the All People Foundation is focused on, we, we're heavily focused on paperwork. One of the problems that we have in our communities with organizations that are providing community services is the lack of, oh, yes. of, of, of yes. appropriate paperwork of yes. creating that. We, we, are we seem everything. to be afraid of it. Mm -hmm. Just in, these are, and this is just in our interaction with organizations. Not all, but more of us are. You have a little 501c3. You have to report every year. There are certain things that you need to do, and people are really afraid of paperwork. So at the All People Foundation, this is one of the things that we do. We help to facili facilitate what other organizations are doing by helping them with proposals, with marketing yes. strategies, with long-term strategies, with mm -hmm. how do you, organizational development, etc. I know Reven's been involved with, I don't know, how many organizations are you associated with now, Reven? <laughs> About 17, 18. Right, <laughs> Reven really should be the community <laughs> police, the community, the community mayor, so to speak. Right. And I know the sister here, uh, all of us here are involved in the community on the ground every day in real time. Right. You know, so so it's important that we get that message across that we are involved and that we're accessible. Right. 
you know. I think it's very important to say that, uh, like I said, with Reven, Paula, Dr. Fraser, Jeff, uh, people sit in on the Illinois African American Family yes, Commission, indeed. right? Yes. And so there's been a lot of cross pollination. These right. ideas are not just something we exactly. brought up, but something that we have been um, doing based on what other people are out there saying. So um, one of the things I'd like to know is, is where do we go from here, you know? Um, Reven, where do we go from here? Things are happening. <laughs> We're seeing unity. We're right. seeing unity. You know, I've seen a difference in Chicago in the in the years that oh, I've yes, been here, yes, yes, um, yes. and the fact that we are coming together in committees and talking. You know, um, what do you think? Where do you, where would you go from here? Well, I just want to say, uh, the group of people we've gathered, and I've been blessed to meet like this. I specifically went after Jeff being the younger of the group because I knew he was direct and loud with them guys, uh, Dr. Frazier in education, and yourself. So I'm just excited. I used to call myself Boots on the Ground, where all the work is getting done at. And so um, I got 30 years of research in social service. So I've been in a room on health, housing, social service, teen pregnancy, gang prevention, grandparent raising, HIV, AIDS. So I'm directly in training because of my job when I was at Family Focus to leave the room with, wow, we in trouble. So gathering that information and meeting people. So now we're able to, uh, utilize my Simeon skills as a basketball player <laughs> to begin to disseminate information, put people in place to be successful and get a job done as we talked about team. So uh, we mentioned Sister Naomi, uh, Blacks and Green, Sustainable yes. Communities, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, Eight Principles of Green, uh, Walk to Work, Live to Work. So that opponent is there. Uh, Jeff with Police Brutality, yes. Dr. Frazier Education, Paula doing International and the African Development Plan. So we've now gotten us people, and I think the governor budget cut in Illinois is going to make all of us have to bow down and behave and talk to each other for the first time <laughs> in a long time. Because it's not going to happen soon. So where we go from here, we have one trillion dollar buying power as a race of people. Mm -hmm. And in that one trillion dollar buying power, Black women control $680 billion right. of that money, third largest of any nation. Yes. So what we're going to do, we had the pleasure of going to Tulsa, Oklahoma, Black Wall Street. I'm talking about the money agenda right now. Mm -hmm. uh, we had the pleasure of taking all the Black Wall Streets here, Chicago, Black Wall Street International, Black Wall Street Chicago, and South Suburban to go down at Ground Zero where the first terrorist attack on American soil was Black Wall Street, Tulsa, Oklahoma and they've redeveloped themselves back. And so we've coming back with it called Shatosa. Our answer to Chirac is Shatosa. Buy black, love black, give black. That's Amen. the campaign. Amen. And so State Representative Floyd went down with us. Mm -hmm. We took an urban planning team. We went down there where knowledge came back. And uh, we're talking about State Rep has a resolution naming National Black Business Month, which is the 14th anniversary of the uh, National Black Business Month, uh, honor of Webb Evans, Mr. Buy Black himself, how to get off the bottom. 31 days of buying in the love of Webb Evans, yes. who talked about, and that's redirect $1 trillion. Right now, presently, we're sending 2% of a trillion dollars with black businesses. Uh -huh. We're gonna launch a campaign August 1st to try to drive 10% of that to black business and create like 100,000 jobs. I think that's doable. And in exchange of money, I think it's going to change some love and relationships. Right. And we're talking about doing business with black business that do good business, not necessarily because you're black. Right. And right. then those who doing bad business, we're going to ask people to call us and let us know at the end of the month what was that experience. So sure. we're going to be doing some other data collecting, Sister Seal. We're going to have different organizations. How was your experience in buying black so we can critique our own? Are we doing good business? Are we doing black business? Do you need your paperwork tightened up? You can call us. So we're excited about this year. We're moving that. Uh, that's going to happen on the ground. Uh, we also going into the uh, the uh, was that the African Festival Labor Day, uh, where they're going to be having the uh, vendors and stuff. We want to drive our money to to the festival that day. They're going to the Million Man March Day of Atonement. We're going to be looking at how do we atone. And it's all about internal reparation now. We got to forgive ourselves and get about them other people business later. Right. Internal reparation. Right. Then we're going to move into Webb Evans' birthday, uh, November 20th, and the United Progress Association and Satch preaching them is Webb Evans and uh, Satch's birthday. So he actually took over Webb Evans' spot. But we're going to take his birthday on the 20th 
and buy black on Black Friday. Mm. Webb Ellis' birthday will be used to be recognized on the 20th, but if you love Webb, buy black on Black Friday instead of spending money. So, so uh. that's some of the agenda we're moving, and we're going to be working with these young people to create some uh, peace trees on the street. But all the way you do is you, the way you kill violence is with a job. Yep. I agree. Mm. So, Jeff, what would you think about that? What's um, some final words that you'd like to forward, give us? Going forward, I want to see us utilize this uh, communication and cooperation vehicle that we have built, this, this, this uh, facilitating organization. I want us to make this more attractive. I want people to keep coming to this website, come to us, to find out who's doing what and where, and to create relationships with um, other organizations that are doing what it is that you are um, 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 working on or you are concerned with, you have passion for. I want us to become extremely attractive and pull people in because at the end of the day, um, there are a handful, probably two handfuls of active community people right. around this city. We have to mobilize the masses. Um, mm -hmm. it's, it, there's so much work to be done. So right. yes. And what you find is as you move around from organization to organization from movement to movement you see the same people exactly. you see the same fighters correct. the same activists we have to figure out a way to mobilize the masses the average everyday joe who, who wasn't born necessarily to be a fighter but may be born to be a survivor right. and we got to teach them that you're underwater uh, convince them that you're underwater and you have to do some type right. of fighting but we need to make it easy so that's why we built this this yes. tool and if we can recruit the everyday uh, everyday masses they could use this tool as a weapon to get us out of the uh, doldrums that we are currently in. So give the people their website address. Um, NBACChicago.org. Okay, so we want you to go online, look at this website, look at the issues, see what committees that you would like to become a part of, and join, right? If you have information that you want to share, brother said that you just have to let them know, pass it on to Jeff, and they will put it up. We're on one accord here. That's right. We have run out of time. So okay. um, is there any parting words? That this is ultimately about advocacy, but the no one organization, not even 200 organizations can do it for the black community. This movement requires participation by everyone, everyone. and all hands exactly. on deck. Right. I'm speaking to the young people. I'm speaking yes, to the yes, person yes, at yes, home who's sitting yes. and saying, well, I can't have any impact on this because this is bigger than me and I don't know what I need to do. What you can do is just take some action. Go to the website, find out how you can participate, and sign up. Get involved. Do something. That's right. That's a powerful last word. Right. So I want to thank my guests. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank, thank you, you for sharing much. what the Black Agenda is and giving all this diverse views. Um, again, my name is Cecile Johnson, CEO of African Development Plan, and I want to thank Global City Unity's Community Outreach for giving us this opportunity to talk about issues that are important to the black community. You can reach African Development Plan on their website, www.africandevelopmentplan.org. Thank you so much. Thank you, Thank you for much. having Appreciate us. Oh. Bang!